back to another video in this playthrough for GMT Games Prime Minister. We are playing the Clockwork C2 scenario, uh, climbing the greasy pole. Uh, and with that, we will just jump right back into the action. All right, so we are back. Um, we have given him four VPs. He's now at 371. And we've reset all of the action cubes and we are back to the opposition leader. So this bill is, his attack range again is 300 and it is currently at 300. So he is going to spend one cube to do that and he will debate that down to 290. So now the next thing he's going to do is either the conservatives, he's going to campaign with either conservatives or gentry. He's not going to do conservatives. So he is going to campaign with the gentry, which raises us by three. Uh, and then he's got a bunch going on here. So he's not going to debate, not flattery remains futile. He is going to go up, uh, he's going to campaign in Scotland. I don't need to bring that with me. He's going to campaign in Scotland. So... Um, the good news here, that's really not that good, though, because it's only one at a time. Well, I guess it's two at a time after this. The good news here, however, is we seem to have um, motivated the opposition leader finally to start getting down to campaigning on his uh, on his priorities card. So hopefully that will be helpful for us. Um, it'll even start maybe drawing some supporters, which, which will be uh, good. So now it's over to us. So this bill is currently... So let's just think about the prime minister's going to do so he's the first two things he's going to drop to he's going to drop past the you know drop to here um middle class and gentry both of those are still he can still move in both of those so he's gonna his first two cubes he's gonna campaign with his third cube if he has it i think he will actually spend it here his defend range is 280 so yeah so he'll spend it here um now here's the thing is if I move this down to minus 60, it'll be 280. He will still spend it here. Uh, but if he does spend it here, then my prime minister won't. But on the other hand, if he doesn't get an action, then it won't move. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend my time. Um, so first things first, I conservatives, farmers or Ireland. So I can go up in farmers. So I'm gonna start by campaigning. Uh, with the farmers, I'm going to raise us by three by moving the farmers up. So that gets us back to 12. And then I am going to campaign in Ireland. And that will hopefully raise us by two. That will raise us by two. So that gets us to 10. So that's in a more reasonable range. Not great, but more reasonable. So that is my turn. So now we are back to the Prime Minister. So if his standing is greater than nine and his highest bill is greater, it's the same kind of as last time. All that is true. So he is going to spend a cube to campaign in the middle class. So that is going to take them up uh, again by two. And so, yeah, so he's not going to spend any time. So he's going to spend time campaigning in the middle class with his first cube, which is going to max that out and get him three. And then he's also going to campaign with a gentry next, right? Yeah, he's going to campaign with a gentry next, and that is going to get him another three. So he's all the way out there again. Wow. But at least he's, he's maxed out there. So he's not going to be doing any more campaigning. He's going to become kind of like dependent on supporter cards for what he's going to do at this point because he's pegged on all the tracks where he campaigns. So that is the prime minister's turn. So bill resolution again, he's going to we're going to pass the arsenic act. So that's going to give him two VPs and we have we don't have a challenge, we don't have an election, so we're going to loop around to the next turn. Okay, so we've uh, given the Prime Minister his victory points uh, for the start of the turn. We've reset the action cubes, and away we go. So this bill is currently at 290. Um, so it is outside of my PM's range. So um, he would, 
uh, sort of campaign with the conservatives, but they are maxed out. So instead, he is going to draw a supporter card, which is going to give him one standing. That gets him into, again, that's sort of like creeping him up into challengeable range. So with his next, he's campaign with the conservatives of the gentry, but I think both of those are pegged. Both of those are pegged. So he's going to draw another clockwork supporter card. So up with farmers, up with work. That is futile because we are pegged on farmers. Up with gentry, up with Ireland, also futile. So plus or minus 10 on a bill. Well, I don't entirely know what to do if everything on a supporter card isn't, uh, is futile, or, so I'm going to quickly check. Well, it doesn't exactly say what I'm to do here, um, but I am going to uh, sort of decide that um, he's going to just, he's going to spend it to debate this bill. I mean, I, it's, otherwise it's completely wasted, so I don't want to completely waste it. So that was, sorry, that was our, our second supporter card? Yeah, because the first one was for standing. And then on the third one, we can go up in Scotland, which is, I think, what we're going to end up doing. We can go up in, the conservatives can go up in Scotland. Yes, we can. So that does that to us. So over to my turn as the backbencher. So conservatives, I can't raise us. Farmers, I can't raise us. I can raise us in Ireland. So I could campaign twice in Ireland. Uh, the situation with this bill is it is at uh, 280. And while that is within his attack range, um, he can best case get it to 310, uh, barring a miracle. So he isn't going to be focusing on that. So I, I'm going to be focusing on debating. So I'm going to put both of my actions into debating. Sorry, I'm going to focus my actions on campaigning. So we're going to put both of these actions into Ireland uh, to bring the election projections here. I feel like I'm going to run out of time before I can reel him in uh, unless I start drawing some really good campaign cards with my opposition leader supporter cards. Anyway, the uh, so now it is time for the prime minister. He draws an event. Is he, if he is projected to lose the next election, he is not. So he ignores that. So uh, moderates and gentry are both. I th or the, sorry, the middle class and the gentry. He's pegged on both of those. So in both of those cases, he's going to end up drawing a supporter. So first card, he draws a supporter. So. Um, that is futile gentry or middle class. So he's pegged on middle class. So this is the only one that has an effect. So we're going to actually raise that by 20. And I'm actually gonna see that what that does. Does that change anything? He could get this up to minus 20 now, which is 320. So that doesn't change anything in terms of that bill. So he will continue to draw another supporter. Uh, those are both pegged. He favor is not futile for him. So he is going to raise his favor by one. That's good for me because that doesn't really do a ton. Uh, and then he's going to spend his third cube once again, uh, drawing a supporter card. So he could cause us to go down in middle class, which is exactly what he's going to do, which raises him to 14. So that is what he's going to do. Okie dokie. So that was his entire turn. We're going to have to... So he's going to be drawing a lot of supporter cards from here on out. That's going to be dictating his actions. And so a lot of what's going to happen here is going to depend on who can draw some supporter cards that give us some big jumps. And what I need is big jumps over here. So I got to find some ways to get some big jumps over here. I might need to start drawing some supporters also because just doing it two at a time is not keeping pace with the prime minister. All that said, he withdraws this bill. So that is going to raise my standing by one, reduce his standing by one. We now are in a position where we can challenge him if we can just get to the point where we win an election, which we are very far away from doing right now. So he is projected to get 360 uh, members of parliament. So he is going to hold an election at this point. Put that over 
there. Okay, so election time. So he is at 355. And he's down to 353. So that gives him 350. Now, uh, I will say his partisan situation may be very different right now. So let's see. So he has 200 from the liberals. It's not because he is not going up that fast in Ireland or the workers. So he has 200 partisans. So basically his moderates go up by 50. Everything else stays the same. So with that, we have come to the um, end of this uh, turn. So we're going to loop back to the beginning again. Okay, so we are back to bill selection. Now, one thing I realized <laughs> is I've been putting past bills back into, into the discard pile, and we're getting close to where we might have to loop around again. So I kind of quickly went through and did my best to clean up the discard pile and take the bills that we, that we have... Um, uh, sort of that have passed out of it. Um, I can't swear I've done a perfect job of that, but um, hopefully uh, I've done a decent job of that. So these are the two that I get to choose from. Uh, they're both moderate bills. Um, moderates plus 50 would give him 200, so he would not select that bill. He's not going to select either of these bills, so we will go ahead and throw the Lunacy Act into the mix for consideration. And then he's going to drop out his uh, five that he's going to choose from. Oh dear. Okay, well, uh, take a quick peek here. Yeah, so none of these moderate bills are in his selection range. Uh, the best one is at 230, so he is going to go for the Parliamentary Papers Act, the Mines and Collieries Act, and the Weights and Measures Act. So this starts life at uh, 320, this starts life at uh, 330, and this starts life at 360. So we don't really mind him passing that. Uh, we would like to prevent him from passing these two if we can. At least one of them, anyway. Uh, okay. So with that, we roll around to our opposition leader. All right. So one thing is, is that we are, uh, as we add four VPs to the prime minister's total, two things worth noting. First one, no elections can't be postponed anymore. And the other thing is that um, if we once we pass 90, there's some adjustments that we make to clockwork behavior. So, um, but we're getting very close to the end of this, uh, and I just don't see how I'm going to get an election in my favor. But we will keep going, and we will see what happens. All right, so our opposition leader, who I really need to be campaigning or drawing supporters, is instead going to be focusing on this bill. Uh, so this bill is currently at uh, 320. That is within his uh, attack range. So he's going to 320. Uh, that it takes it down to 310. That takes it down to 300. That takes it down to 290. So he spends his entire turn debating that down. Now that's not necessarily terrible, I guess, um, because... I think the Prime Minister will spend his time on this bill, so... But what it does mean is I've got a campaign. Like, I've just got to leave these two to duke it out over these bills. And in fact, I'm not even going to campaign, because the best I can do is I can move it by... Well, I can move it by five for Ireland. So I'm going to campaign one more time. After this, I'm going to start really drawing supporters, because I need things to go quicker. But um, I'm at least going to take this opportunity to go from 9 to 14 on Ireland which is going to take us down to nine there, um, and we'll go with that. So now we are back to the Prime Minister, who is going to draw an event. It's a by-election. If the number is... Okay, so he's actually... Oh! Oh! He's at 350, and the election projection has him at 350, so we don't get to take his standing down yet again with a by-election. So now... The highest bill is 
this one in. Well, they're tied, but he's going to prioritize the Parliamentary, Parliamentary Papers Act. So he is going to debate the Parliamentary Papers Act. It is still at at uh, at 290. It is within his defend range, defense range, for an all bill. So he's going to defend that. Now, this is no longer it's no longer the highest bill. So then he is also going to spend one here. So maybe I'm getting lucky with a little bit of inefficiency here. And then this last action, he's going to spend uh, again on the uh this bill is is the priority because it would raise his standing and that is something he would want to prioritize because that would uh, cause us to um we wouldn't be able to challenge now however he is now in a position where uh he cannot pass either of these bills so he is going to withdraw one of them and the one he's going to withdraw is the one with the lowest vote projection so the mines and collieries act is withdrawn um the opposition leader is now up to 11 standing the prime minister is down to nine standing i can get him down to two action cubes potentially next turn uh which may again maybe that will help <laughs> help me reel him in uh so with that uh we're gonna uh there's no challenge no election so with that we are going to um pause the video here the next the next uh, turn is going to take a little bit longer because we're going to have to uh, both to run an election um but we will be back with uh, more prime minister in the next video thanks for sticking around to the end of the video i hope you're enjoying the video uh the playthrough uh, of, of prime minister um as well as the channel in general uh please leave comments with suggestions on uh, things like other games that you'd love to see come to the channel or improvements uh, that can be made uh, to the channel and we will see you in the next video on agility snips gaming table